let, let's list two functions of membrane proteins. So these are paper two uh, section B questions, and this one is worth two marks. We need to remember that there are both integral and peripheral proteins, and I'm drawing it right here. Um, uh, integral protein is one that is goes through and the peripheral one is the second dot that I drew that just sits on top of the cell. Let's talk about integral proteins first. Integral proteins are often to do with uh, passive or active movement of substances into and outside the cell. So for the passive movement, we've got protein channels. For the active movement, we've got protein pumps. Two easy marks. Now for peripheral proteins, you want to talk about uh, things which are a bit different. So the one that jumps to mind for me is a neurotransmitter binding site. Say when you have um, an action potential being transferred across um, the synaptic gap. That's uh, the acetylcholine binding sites are an example of that. The second one I'm going to talk about are, are electron carriers. So these are proteins which are found within the mitochondria, for example. So these are uh, four examples. Um, you can only, you only need to name two of them, but these are the ones that uh, really jump to mind for me. Now let's explain why di digestion of large food molecules is essential. Pretty easy. Large food molecules, they're large, they're too large to be absorbed by the villi of the small intestine. They need to be broken down by chemical as well as physical breakdown into something smaller that can be absorbed into the villi and into the bloodstream. Fairly easy. Now, let's move on to the next one. Outline why antibiotics are effective against bacteria but not against viruses. I like this question because you can talk about... Uh, the, I find the best way to answer this question is to talk about why antibiotics are effective against bacteria and why they're not effective against viruses. So the first thing we're going to talk about is that antibiotics, they target specific metabolic pathways which are unique to bacteria. And I've given the example of penicillin which acts on the cell wall. Uh, now if you remember, cell, the cell wall is something which is uh, not present in human cells, so therefore penicillin is very effective against bacterial cells but not human cells. The second point we're going to talk about is why it's not effective in viruses. Viruses, they don't have their own organelles to reproduce themselves. Essentially, they hijack the host's organelles. And because they use a host's um, organelles and their organ systems, then antibiotics will, will not be effective because antibiotics target bacterial systems, not your host systems. Final one we're going to talk about is outlining the use of PCR or polymerase chain reaction to copy and amplify minute quantities of DNA. When you think about DNA and uh, copying of it using PCR, you think about um, heating it and cooling it down, as well as some other enzymes, which I believe I forgot to mention in this particular case. So the DNA to be copied is um, split apart via heating. So you kind of cook it, and then those hydrogen bonds in between the double helix strand, they melt apart, and you get two single strands. Now, these single strands afterwards, they undergo complementary base pairing with the addition of um, DNA polymerase. That's something that I haven't written down here, but remember to put that into your answer. With the help of DNA polymerase, complementary nucleotides, they join onto the single strands, and then this produces... Um, double strands of DNA. Once this has happened once, then you can keep on repeating this cycle until sufficient DNA is produced. And by uh, by uh, by repeating this cycle, say eight, ten times, you get uh, you can double it. If you double it um, once, twice, three times, eight different times, you'll get a large number of DNA at the end.